Greetings friends, old and new, Dragon here once again with another review. If it's your first time finding my channel, then do please consider clicking that red button and subscribing. Today getting into Spectrum Films' exceptional collector's edition of Colonel Panics from 2016, directed by Cho Jinsyuk. This is a compelling mix of art house movie meets exploitation movie meets cyberpunk thriller meets sci-fi movie. Really fascinating, one that is going to, I think, stay with me for quite a long time. This is going to be a spoiler-free review, so don't worry if you've not seen the film so far. I'm certainly not going to spoil it for you. The, the description about the movie online says, The destinies of two men, one from the future and one from the past, become entwined as a malevolent virus spreads throughout level four, a digital gaming experience that blurs dreams and reality. I'm not too sure if my perspective of what the film was about is entirely accurate. It's just my kind of interpretation of it. I would love to chat to the director at some point and try and find out if my interpretation of it is right. But I kind of get the sense that he has designed it to try and be something that each person will take maybe their own uh, unique perspective on the film from. So I think it's designed to be kind of intentionally quite cryptic. Uh, whether or not these two different versions that we see uh, one in the past, one in the future, are connected in whichever way we we determine them to be is the part that I'm unsure of. My take on it was that uh, the sections in the future where we see a um, a kind of games or VR specialist played by Yasuki Miyawaki um, being employed to try and solve some of the bugs that are in a, a gaming experience. I kind of got the impression that the scenes we were seeing in the past might well be the gaming experience that he was being hired to kind of iron out the kinks with. And then as the film progresses, these two worlds kind of collide. But really incredibly well put together, some stunning performances. Um, the main characters mostly play two parts, one in the past, one in the future. And our lead character, um, Kaito in the present and Nagisa in the future, both played by Yasuki Miyawaki. Phenomenal, I think. He's a stand-up comedian in real life and does a really incredible job. He's really, really watchable and very different personalities than the two different versions of him that we see. So he's quite meek and quite mild in, in the present um, and then really quite arrogant um, in the in the future, kind of very, very sort of different character types. And a standout performance for me in the film was from Tia Tan, who's playing a prostitute in the present parts and a kind of a cyborg slash kind of android in the future parts. She was really, really compelling. She doesn't have a huge amount of dialogue, but she's the one that you'll see in most of the promotional uh, kind of images from the film. Um, and her performance is really, really good. Uh, it was um, was really compelling. So I think as a film overall, it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. I found it kept me guessing the whole time and was really beautifully put together. Cinematography is exceptional uh, by Tetsuhiro Kato. Uh, soundtrack's fantastic by Fabrice Viel. I think, think old style Warp records, so kind of electronica, uh, reminded me of some Autechre and some Aphex Twin stuff in places, but really, really good and fits the tone of the film really well. Beautifully constructed and edited, um, and I think he's uh, Cho Jin Zik's done a fantastic job of pulling some really interesting performances. So again, I would say that it's um, something to dive into if you enjoyed low-budget sci-fi movies like Primer from a few years ago about the group of guys who made a time machine in a lock-up storage unit where the concepts are the bigger thing, where the budget can't, um, there's just not the budget there to deliver in terms of, of visual spectacle in a way that you'll see in big massive blockbuster movies. The ideas have to be much, much larger and much, much stronger to kind of really make the film compelling in different ways. And this delivers on so many different levels in that regard. So I think some of the themes that are exploring here are really big and they're explored really well. So it's, it does have a, a kind of horror slash gore element to it as you get further through the end. Um, there's a quite violent conclusion to the movie. All the special effects done by uh, Yoshiro Nishimura, uh, who I think did all the, the special effects makeup for Tokyo Gore Police and does a fantastic job here. So it really, when it does take a, a more violent turn, it's really genuinely quite shocking in the way that, that real actual violence should be when it's properly captured. So it's um, it shouldn't be should really be quite shocking and it does um so some of the violence when it, it takes place at the end of this film really kind of knocked me for six really um not in a way that feels not in keeping with the movie but in the way that it's just been really really well handled really well shot and really well staged and by that point when it arrives you're quite invested in the different characters so it was pretty um it hit pretty hard in the best possible way yeah really effective um i think the the title colonel panics is a play on colonel panics spelled k-e-r-n-e-l which is a Unix term and describes the, the safety measure uh, implemented by the operating system upon detecting an internal fatal error. So I think it's 
really kind of playing off the fact that the the VR program inside the game inside the movie um, has huge issues which start to collide with the real world uh, with devastating effects. But yeah, really really fantastic. And th this release from Spectrum is pretty beautiful. It's not English sub friendly. Don't let that put the, put you off though. Um, I will leave a link down below to my good friend Will over at the Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society. He put together a great video about how to add subtitles to these releases. If you're so inclined to do so, you will need a Blu-ray burner. Um, there, it's the easiest way to be able to kind of add subs because from my understanding there's not um, a version of this available on DVD or on Blu-ray that does have English subs. There's a Japanese DVD which is this one but I don't think that has English subs on it either so I think this is your best option at the moment certainly if you're in Europe. There's a fantastic extra feature on the disc. There's a 30 minute interview with the director. He explains his intentions with the movie and gave me a little bit more of an understanding of what he was trying to do. It's really, really good. Um, he's really compelling and really engaging when he speaks about the film. He describes it as really being the love affair between a man and a woman that's somewhat unrequited, between a man and technology, and um, between a man and a robot, uh, which I think certainly the film delivers on in all three areas. Yeah, I, I just found it's one that I'm going to enjoy going into again. I think I'm going to get an awful lot more from it the second and the third viewings. Um, I'm going to kind of pick up on things that I didn't notice first time round. It's a film that keeps you guessing in the best possible way. So yeah, two thumbs way, way up for this. I would kind of give it a 7 out of 10 for the movie, 9 out of 10 for the release, 10 out of 10 for the presentation. So I've been really a big, massive fan of the cover art that they put together for the disc. I think it's a beautiful package. This is dual format. Um, so we get Blu-ray and we get the DVD. Um, Tia Tan's character features on both discs here um, and features throughout all the, the poster art that you'll see on both the Japanese version and on this French edition of it. Um, thank you very, very much to Spectrum for providing a copy to me to review. This one, I think they'd sent a few movies together and this has been the one that I've enjoyed the most of all the films that I've gone through so far. It's the one that's certainly the most challenging as a viewer. Um, but the most rewarding for the, for the challenges that it presents. So yeah, highly, highly recommended. Uh, one that I really enjoyed way, way more than, than I thought I was going to. I didn't know very much going into it. And like I say, it's one that I think is going to stick with me for a, for a long, long time. Performances overall, fantastic. First rate. And um, two thumbs up to Jin Jin Siak. I'm intrigued to see what he does next. Spectacular work for a debut filmmaker. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you on the next one. Take care.